Hello stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I have a technique to share with you today. It is one of my favorites. It's called the chalkboard technique. It's going to be part of the Stampers Dozen blog hop for October. So you're going to get a whole bunch of ideas with this chalkboard technique. We're gonna be using a white craft ink pad and also our blending brushes for some really cute and easy Christmas cards. Let's flip the camera around. I'll show you how to do it. At the end of the video, there's going to be a link that you can click on right in this corner up here. That's gonna take you to my blog post for these projects. And then you'll see a list of everyone else included in the blog hop. You're going to scroll down and click on the names and you're gonna go hop to everybody's blog to be able to see a whole bunch of ideas with the chalkboard technique. I'm gonna be using the Snow Wonder bundle for the chalkboard technique cards that I'm gonna share with you today. The stamp set and the Snow Time dies, there's seven different dies in here, are featured in our holiday mini catalog on page 21. So there's some really nice ideas in here to go along with this bundle too. You can get the dies, for $33, the stamp set is $22. And I'm just looking to see if they have anything more. Nope. And this was actually featured in our holiday mini catalog last year, and it was so popular that Stampin' Up! decided to bring it back. So that's really fun. All right, we are going to be using a white craft pad. And also, I talked about these blending brushes. I love these. They're just like the nicest brushes. You get three in a pack for $12. So I'm going to bring in my piercing mat. This is what I like to stamp on. It's a mat and I just wrap some printer weight paper around it and tape it on there so I'm not stamping on my actual mat. We sell these in our online stores. Here comes all of our cardstock layers. Now, I've got an envelope. This is one of our basic white envelopes. I've got crumb cake cardstock here. This is four and a quarter by 11. I've already scored it at five and a half. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to get a good crisp edge on that. The rest of our layers include a four by five and a quarter inch basic white layer for the inside. I've also got a real red half inch strip that we're gonna use on the inside. A real red layer that is three and an eighth by three and five eighths, our black chalkboard layer. This is basic black cardstock. There's, there's nothing fancy about it. It's three by three and a half. I have a scrap of old olive and a scrap of basic white. So I think what I'm gonna do here, we're gonna jump right in to our technique. Now, as I was making cards for this particular blog hop, there are several different, well, I should say there are a couple different ways you can do this. You can stamp your images on your black layer first, and you can add some chalk or white ink to it afterwards, or you can do the chalk and white ink first and then stamp. And I don't really think it makes any difference. I'm gonna stamp these pretty trees right over here in the bottom corner and always white on black just as like woo that looks really nice and then i've got the sentiment christmas wishes and joyful greetings and i'm just going to put that right across the top in the middle okay I'm then going to bring in this blending brush and I'm just tapping it into the white ink and I like to start off the page with the blending brushes so that you don't get globs of ink. Whether you're using white ink or colored ink, you wanna do that. And I'm just going to add a little bit of ink around the edges of a chalkboard or the black layer because that's the way a chalkboard would look is it would still have a little bit of that ink residue on it. Now I'm gonna come in and just add a little bit here and there. And I'll pick this up so you can see it a little bit better. I just always think this is such a, I don't know, a charming technique. It brings back a lot of old memories of black chalkboards, I guess, right? They don't really have black chalkboards in school anymore. Everybody's got those magic boards or the, um, yeah, they write on a screen and it appears on the board. I can't remember what they're called, but they're pretty fancy. 
So this brings back a little nostalgia, I guess. And the colors that I'm using kind of make for an old fashioned Christmas. So I thought that kind of went along with it too. Now we're gonna take this basic white scrap and I'm gonna grab my snowman. I thought I had him mounted, but I do not. Here comes my snowman. We can close this up. Now, as far as the blending brush goes, you can take this and wash it out and let it dry. That's what I'm going to do with it so I can use it for other things. We're gonna bring in Memento ink and this adorable snowman. I just love all of the detail on this snowman. And again, it's kind of old fashioned. And we're just gonna stamp that on our scrap. And I just, I think it's just beautiful. I love this snowman. All right, stamp and blend markers. I'm gonna do a little bit here with the red, and this is the red dark, real red dark. And then I'm gonna bring in the old olive dark. So I've got those holly berries and then a couple holly leaves on the hat. And then I thought I would use the light misty moonlight for the scarf and the hat. And of course I love the way Stampin' Blend markers don't leave those scribble marks. And you're coloring with them. Oh, and I'm gonna need orange for his nose. I forgot about that. So we're gonna grab pumpkin pie and color in that nose. That's that's all the color I'm gonna coloring I'm gonna do on there. I am gonna bring in a wink of Stella. And I always like to add just a little bit of bling. And I thought coloring the scarf with some wink of Stella would do just that and the hat. We're gonna do a little bit more with the wink of Stella in just a second. Okay, there is a die that coordinates with this that'll cut it right out. There's also a die for the trees that we added here. Whoops, my snowman stayed in here, there we go. And then we have these really interesting dies in here. There's two of them and all they do is emboss, but I wanted to show this to you because I thought this is just a scrap that it was really, really a neat look. You could do that in the corners on the front of a card or on the inside of a card. You've also got a couple labels here and a die to cut out the wreath that is part of this stamp set. So I'm going to add my little snowman die. I'm going to run this over to my die cutting machine and I'll be right back. And here's our snowman all cut out and ready to go. We're going to put some dimensionals on the back of him. And I'm just gonna set him aside with our chalkboard. Now, this old olive layer, I'm gonna use with the holly border punch. And this is a border punch that does holly. And you can keep going and do a whole border with it. We're gonna do that on the next card I'm gonna show you. But I just wanted a couple holly leaves for the front of my card. All right, I think that we are ready to start assembling. So I'm gonna take my chalkboard layer, add it to the front of my card. Make sure I've got it opening the right way. Gosh, sometimes that's harder to do than it should be. Here we go. And then we're gonna bring in our snowman. and I'm gonna put him right down here. Here comes our holly leaves. And I'm just gonna put a little dot of glue on each one. 
And then I'm going to put those right down here in the corner, just kind of like my little embellishment. Red rhinestones. Love these things. You get 220 of them in a pack, so they are a very good value. And I'm just going to bring three of them in here. A little bit of bling going on there. And I thought my card just needed a little something else. So, black gingham ribbon to the rescue. And I'm just going to tie this in a bow. And we're going to add a mini glue dot to this and add it to our chalkboard layer, just like this. Okay, pretty cute, right? Let's do a little something to the inside. This is what I came up with. I've already got my Christmas, Christmas wishes, so I didn't really feel like um, Merry Christmas was a good thing to put on the inside of my card. So I decided just to decorate it with a little bit of colored cardstock. This is a half inch strip of real red. And then I wanted to carry the gingham pattern through to the inside. So I thought, well, I can just add a strip of ribbon, right? And I'm just gonna tape that on the back. You could use mini glue dots or you could grab your scotch tape. I wanna make sure that's centered, there we go. Isn't that cute? Oh, it's going to give me a hard time again. I got it too perfectly scored. It's directly in half, right? What are the chances? <laughs> okay, so here is our first chalkboard card. I love that inside with that ribbon carried through. I think that was just a... Really, I'm glad that idea came to me because it's exactly what it needed. All right, now I have one more card to share with you. I decided to kind of carry through with the same colors on this one. Oh, and I have an envelope. What am I going to do with that envelope? Hmm. Let's see. I'm thinking I will use my Misty Moonlight ink and I have the snowflakes from the Snow Wonder, and I, oh, shoot. Ugh, hang on. I stamp a few little snowflakes right in here. You could also do the flap of your envelope. That would look really neat. Maybe one more right up there. I love it. Okay, so that goes along with the scarf. Cute, right? Okay, here comes our next card. I'm using crumb cake. Now this is five and a half by eight and a half. We're gonna fold that in half. And I really wanted to show you this border punch because I think it's really neat. So we're gonna take and open our card back up and we're going to put this card stuck in here. There are little lines on our border punches. So I'm gonna put my card stuck in up to this line right here. And then because of the width of my cardstock and the fact that I've already made a card doing this, I'm gonna push it a little beyond that particular mark. And I know that then that's gonna center this on my card because I already made one, so yay. <laughs> okay, so same thing. Push my cardstock down to that line and then I'm gonna push it a little bit further. Oops, I think I just locked my mechanism, there we go. Sometimes when you're using these punches, you'll accidentally move this as you're punching them, and that would be a reason why it wouldn't complete, and that's exactly what I just did. So a little tip for you, because I know sometimes people are like, my punch won't work right, and then it's, um, I know what's happening usually. It's that they've locked their mechanism and they didn't realize it, so then I... <laughs> 
people are like, oh my gosh, seriously. Yeah, it happens. Don't, don't feel bad about it. Okay, so now what we've got here is a really neat border of holly, right? We're going to take a piece of basic white cardstock. Hang on, i got to make sure I have the right size here. For the inside. And, yep, I've got a one and a quarter inch strip of designer paper. Now, this is the gingerbread and peppermint designer series paper and oh my gosh so many fun patterns in here it comes six by six you get 48 six by six sheets so it's it's a nice pack of paper to do all kinds of holiday crafting with I'm going to take this one and a quarter inch piece and add it well let's put our glue on here for right now I think I might have a little little stopped up glue here. Put some over here. I'm going to put this all the way to the bottom of my inside white layer. And this inside white layer is, I can't remember if I made it four by five and a quarter, so we're going to measure it. Yeah, it's four by five and a quarter. I'm just going to make it just a little bit wider, but I think this will be fine. And I just broke my golden rule. You should always stamp if you're going to stamp on your inside layer. You should always stamp before you glue anything in place. So I've got my sending you blessings, peace, and magic this Christmas season. And I'm going to stamp that right on the inside. Yay! And then where are those snowflakes? We're going to clean those snowflakes off in the Simply Shammy. And grab our red ink pad and put some little red snowflakes in here. I just thought that would be look nice. Now we can put this on the inside of our card. And there comes my glue. My glue is working better now. And I wanted this designer series paper in here because of the border that we punched out. What do you think? Isn't that kind of neat? Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna do our chalkboard. For this layer, this one is two and a half by five and a half. And I wanted to bring in this well-defined stamp set. This has Christmas, winter, gratitude, holiday, a to and from, and Halloween in here, which I think is really cute. When taking candy from strangers is good and dressing normally is strange. <laughs> I like that. So we're going to use that for our chalkboard technique. I'm going to stamp this right over here. Does that look straight to you? It's a little crooked. Let me stand up and do it again. That looks better. And then we're gonna bring in those trees again just because I love them. Oops, there's our trees. Here comes that blending brush. To put that little bit of Little bit of chalk on the edge. You don't have to put it all around the whole edge, but I just love that. I think it's just really sweet. Okay, we're gonna add that to a real red layer. A real red layer is two and five eighths by five and a half. And as you can see, this is kind of a good technique for mass production of cards if you want a technique. I mean, it's not does it's not real time consuming. You can oops, definitely make up a whole bunch of them. Let's see if Kelly can put layers together today. Good great. Goodness gracious. Some days, right? Some days things just don't go as well as they do on other days. Okay, we're going to add this to the front of our card. I'm going to leave a little bit of that crumb cake up here at the top. Make sure I've got this on here straight. 
And again, I'm going to carry through this black and white gingham ribbon because I just really think it looks good with this color combination and the fact that, you know, gingham ribbon is kind of old fashioned and chalkboards are old fashioned. And this is, these are kind of old fashioned um, Christmas cards. This is really nice ribbon to work with too. It ties really nice bows. Got our mini glue dot here. Oops, and I got one right there. I'm gonna curl that under a little bit. It was a little bit big. I'm just gonna set that right here in the middle. Get rid of this glue dot that's stuck to my nail. And then, how about a little red rhinestone for our eye on Christmas? I thought that was cute. That's a nice little touch, right? And then this other piece of designer paper I have cut. It's the same that I used on the inside here. I've cut this two and a half by five and a half. And I'm just going to add it to my envelope flap. I keep moving my hair out of my face. I've got this like three strands of hair that keep falling in my face. I'm not sure why. And apparently it doesn't care that I'm busy. <laughs> that I'm busy with you guys. <laughs> Here we go. And here comes our little matching envelope. Isn't that sweet? Okay, guys. Let's move all the mess out of the way. Okay, so here's our cards. What do you think? I just think these are so cute. This is going to be my technique for my technique club in the month of October. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like to be part of my Technique Club, you are more than welcome to check out all the details on my blog. There's going to be a link right up here that's going to show you all the details about this club. You'll get a card in the mail using a different club, or I'm sorry, a different technique every month, and you'll also get a quarter sheet of cardstock with instructions on it and the technique on there so you can refer back to it and keep it and collect a whole bunch of them if you'd like. All the details in the right-hand column of my blog. I'll also um, put it under my shopping list on my blog post for these cards. So you can just look for those. Make sure you click up here and head to the blog hop so you can see all the techniques using the chalkboard technique from the Stampers Dozen design team. Click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. And if you need catalogs and you don't have a demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. Pop me an email at kelly at stampabub.com and I'd be happy to mail them off to you. Don't forget to give me your address. This is my current host code. If you place an order under $150, please use this. If it's over $150, don't use that code. You're going to get some rewards from Stampin' Up. I definitely want you to have those. Have yourselves a great rest of the night. Bye-bye.